Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed our workshops this morning and were able to visit our exhibitors. We appreciate them taking time out of their schedule to join us this morning. I'm Michelle Gu with the City of Fort Worth Communications and Public Engagement Department, and I'd like to welcome you to the 20th Annual Neighborhood Awards. I'd like to give a big thank you to our workshop and luncheon sponsors, Central Market and Maritain. Thanks to their generosity. <laughs> thanks to their generosity, we are able to offer this event free of charge to all of our neighborhoods. Another round. This year's centerpieces were donated by area florists. Each, each arrangement has the card next to it of the florist who donated those flowers, and a list is also included in your workshop booklet that you got this morning. And finally, we would like to thank our venue sponsor, Doxology Bible Church, for their lovely space. The I would like to ask Dr. Chris Freeland to deliver the invocation. We are so honored that you are here. Uh, Doxology for 70 years has been devoted to trying to be the best church for our city that we can possibly be and uh, in every way imaginable. And so when we get a chance to do something with our city like this that honors people who honor neighbors and uh, who go out into our city to help it flourish, we are so grateful and honor you. We're so grateful that you're here. Even though some of us don't share the same faith in the room, we all share the same heart and we're grateful for that. So can I tell God thanks for the food and for you as well as we uh, prepare to continue today? Father, thank you for every single individual that's in this room and the neighbors that they represent. Thank you, Lord, for this city, for its leadership, uh, for a, a place that is, is desiring to flourish and to see the people here flourish in every way imaginable. We're so grateful for the individual roles and the corporate role that every single person in this room plays in that and leading towards that and towards a bright future. Lord, it's not always easy. Uh, sometimes it's messy, sometimes it's hard, but these are the people who are committed to doing the hard work in making that happen. And so we continue to ask for your uh, empowerment of that uh, with deep gratitude for every person in this room. Thanks for those who have organized this and for the food that's been prepared and for the awards that are to come to celebrate uh, people who have done just really, really hard work over the last year. We're grateful for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Um, while you enjoy your meal, we'd like to ask that you take the time to get to know the people at your table. We want you to determine who has lived in Fort Worth the longest. We will use this information later in the program. I hope everyone is enjoying their delic delicious lunch provided by Chadra Mesa. I would like to thank the council members who are with us today to please stand. Thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. I know it means a lot to our neighborhoods to have their council members here. Um, I also want to ask the city employees who are here today to please stand. You all serve our neighborhoods in different ways. If you're a city employee, please stand. I would like to single out one group, our community engagement team. These liaisons organize today's exhibits, workshops, awards, and luncheon. Scott Castillo, Tracy Edwards on the back, Terrence Hamilton, Sharika Johnson, Olga Nolan, and Julie Orba. Please look in your booklets to find their contact information. They are ready to come out to your next event or meeting and let you know all the ways that we can help your organization. The Neighborhood Awards were created to recognize you and the best projects and activities that bring us together. Today we'll recognize outstanding work by HOAs and neighborhood associations in each of these categories. 
Neighborhood Newsletters, Fort Worth Pride, Spirit of Fort Worth, the Mayor's Civic Engagement and Community Collaboration, Mayor's Health and Wellness. We'll also give four individual awards, the Danny Scarth Trailblazer Award, our Code Compliance Officer of the Year, and our Neighborhood Police Officer of the Year, and then finally, Neighbor of the Year. Our final award will go to the Fort Worth Neighborhood of the Year. They will go on to comp compete in the National Neighborhoods USA. Last year's winner, the Oakhurst Neighborhood Association, placed third in the national competition. This year's awards were judged by a panel of judges from area municipalities. They reviewed all of the nominations and chose the winners. We thank them for their time. For each category, we will recognize the finalists, and we ask that when your name is called, you stand at your table. When the winner is announced, we invite a representative to come up to the stage, receive their award, and we invite the council member to join them to help us present the award. You can then exit to the left, and we will have a photograph taken using the Fort Worth background. All of the photos that were taken today will be available on our website, and I would like to thank Michael Vega from Neighborhood Services for joining us today and taking all the photos. Thank you, Michael. Our first awards recognize the need for good communication among neighbors. Newsletters are judged on content and appearance as well as how well they reach their intended audience. This year we have, act, we have selected a winner in the Neighborhood Association and HOA categories. I'd like to invite Mayor Parker to join me on stage to present the awards. While she comes up, while she comes up, I will read the finalist in the HOA category, Chisholm Trail Ranch, Heritage, The Villages of Woodland Springs, and the winner is... In the HOA category, our winner is Heritage. Councilmember Blaylock is joining them on stage. Councilmember Lowersdorf, uh, Heritage actually covers two council districts, and um, Councilmember Lowersdorf was not able to join us today. Next is um, for the Neighborhood Association. These associations produce four to 12 newsletters a year. Costs are covered by member dues or advertising. Articles include updates on travel issues in the neighborhood, meeting notices, and photos from community events. Some are mailed, some are emailed, and some are posted online or distributed door to door. The Voluntary Newsletter Award finalists are Carter Riverside, Eastern Hills, Ridgely Hills, Ryan Place, Woodhaven, and Wedgwood South. I'd like to apologize that Wedgwood South was left off of the program. And the winner is? Okay, we need like a drum roll or something, y'all. Eastern Hills Neighborhood Association. Before Mayor Parker announces the other finalists and winners in the remaining categories, I would like to take another opportunity to thank Doxology for um, letting us hold our event here. They are so generous with their space and their staff. And um, by them allowing us to use this space, it really makes this uh, cost effective for us to make it free to all of our neighborhoods. So we really appreciate it. Okay, next up is the Fort Worth Pride Award, which is given to an organization that improves physical aspects of the neighborhood. 
Neighborhoods may have completed beautification projects, hosted cleanups, built community gardens, or worked with city departments and others to make their neighborhood cleaner and more attractive. In the HOA category, judges chose just one finalist, so they are also our winner. Heritage HOA is the winner of this year's Pride Award. <laughs> Councilmember Blaylock, if you'd like to come up again and take a photograph. Let me tell you a little bit about what they did to be the winner for this year. In early November 2022, Eagle Scout Troop 336 unveiled the Barksdale Butterfly Garden. The vision was to enlighten Barksdale Park's visitors about the life cycle and migratory journey of the monarch butterfly. Through the cultivation of special flora, the troop not only achieved the educational goal, but also made a significant impact on the local ecosystem. The success of their efforts became evident as a plethora of monarch butterflies sought refuge in the garden. The Barksdale Butterfly Garden, now a thriving testament to ecological balance, has become a visual delight enjoyed by all who visit the park. The installation of the park included Eagle Scout troop members, leaders, and volunteers. In the Neighborhood Association category, we have several finalists. West Meadowbrook for their One Tree at a Time initiative, where they partnered with the city's Neighborhood Tree Planting Program to add native varieties of trees along Normandy Road in West Meadowbrook. The tree planting was part of an effort to add the neighborhood's tree canopy, where a total of 41 trees were planted during the project. Can I keep going if I yell really loud? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Historic Southside for their Glenwood Park project that aims to revitalize the park. Focusing on cleaning up litter, providing a space, safe space for the community, and addressing the homeless. And Garden of Eden for their efforts to resurface Elliott Reader Road after 19 years of neglect. Ryan Place Improvement Association for their work to revitalize Daggett Park. After almost seven years of work by many volunteers, Ryan Place and Daggett Elementary have a new park and pavilion that was built with their funds and according to their specifications. And finally, Oakhurst for their beautification efforts throughout the year, including holiday decorations, park cleanup, yard of the month program, and plantings in common areas. And the winner is the Ryan Place Improvement Association. <laughs> Okay, I'll talk loud too. Um, Dagen Park is a central meeting place for all of Ryan Place and is used for many neighborhood events, including the annual Ryan Place Fairmount softball game and many neighborhood gatherings. Dagen Elementary School also uses it as a playground. Because of the frequent usage and exposure, they decided in 2016 to invigorate the park with the help of funds generated from the annual Candlelight Christmas and Ryan Place Home Tour. Following that year's tours, they created a Daggett Park Committee that worked to make the park a place it's where families... I don't think I could have done that the whole time. <laughs> um, let's see, where families and children of Ryan Place and Daggett Elementary could enjoy. So in 2023, after almost seven years of work by many volunteers, Ryan Place and Daggett Elementary have a new park and pavilion that was built with their funds and according to their specifications. Michelle's kids are grown, so she doesn't have to yell as much anymore, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Next is the Spirit of Fort Worth Award, which is given to associations that foster social revitalization, enhance cultural aspects of the neighborhood, or just simply make residents feel welcomed and connected. Will the HOA finalists please stand? We have several HOA finalists for the Spirit of Fort Worth Award. Villages of Woodland Springs for the revitalization of their fall festival after seeing a decline in previous years. It's Woodland Springs here. You can stand up, I see hands in the back. Next, we have Hewland Heights, which added many social events throughout the year with a 4th of July celebration and parade that included over 150 patriotic donuts, 40, 400 hamburgers, and 250 hot dogs. 
And finally, HO Heritage HOA for their national night out that was celebrated in all eight subdivisions and organized by block captains who each planned a unique activity for their neighbors. And the winner is the Villages of Woodland Springs. <laughs> Councilmember Blaylock, if you want to join me on stage. In 2023, the Villages of Woodland Springs Social Committee worked to expand and foster relationships with schools, residents, charities, and businesses within the community. Last year's Fall Festival would not have been a success without assistance from the adult transition students, Timber Creek Honor students, local businesses, Donation House, and Furry Friend Rescue. Their energy, hard work, and efforts were evident by the enthused residents who attended. There are five finalists in the Voluntary Association category. Will you please stand? First is Lake Como, who is a finalist for their Juneteenth celebration with activities for 150 participants ranging from five to 80 years old. Thank you, ladies. Next is Carter Riverside for their community events throughout the year, including the 4th of July celebration, National Night Out, Boo on the Bray, Christmas in Riverside, and Coffee with the Cops. Ryan Place for their candlelight Christmas in Ryan Place that featured tours of a variety of homes, more than 200 volunteer docents, and guest appearances by school choirs and bands. Thank you to Ryan Place. <laughs> Next is Wedgwood South, a finalist for their chili cook-off that included great chili, recognition for the veterans in the community, and outreach to the neighbors to get them involved. And finally, Wedgwood East for their Woodway flag project that allowed the neighborhood to install infrastructure so they could now put out flags for Memorial Day, Independence Day, and Veterans Day. Okay, and the winner is Lake Como. <laughs> Councilmember Williams, if you want to join me on stage. The Lake Como Juneteenth celebration was established in 2020 by Kendra Williams, a lifelong Lake Como community resident. Planning for the third annual Juneteenth event began in 2022. The theme, Food from the Soul, Why We Eat What We Eat, focused on how African American foods have played a major role in shaping our culture. The successful event brought out close to 150 community members and started with an annual memorial walk. As a result of the event's success, there have been several individuals and businesses who've reached out to volunteer or support the organization in future, ev future events. Next up is the Civic Engagement and Community Collaboration Award, which recognizes neighborhoods that partner with others to tackle significant or creative initiatives. They may work with city staff, elected officials, schools, businesses, or other neighborhoods and civic groups to bring about positive change to their neighborhood or the city as a whole. Our first finalist is Lake Como, is a finalist for their partnership with the Leadership Academy at Como Elementary School businesses and the community center and volunteers to provide school supplies to children in need. <laughs> Next up is West Meadowbrook, partnered with the Reby Carey Youth Library to hold a large national night out celebration that included local businesses, faith-based organizations, and law enforcement agencies. Woodhaven also hosted a national night out that included the international leadership of Texas and allowed various organizations to provide information to the residents. <laughs> Historic Southside partnered with the TCU nursing faculty, the Park and Recreation Department, Tarrant County Public Health, and Cross Timbers Chapter of the Naturalists to help clean up and revitalize Glenwood Park. And finally, Ryan Place Improvement Association, who worked with Councilmember Beck and the city zoning staff to have sections of B multifamily zoning converted to A single family zoning. <clears throat> and the winner is Lake Como.
Williams, you're up here again with me. Como Lions Heart partnered with community organizations and churches to provide valuable resources for the back to school fair. Local organizations, businesses, and volunteers played crucial roles in ensuring success by providing financial support and resources, creating a symbiotic relationship that benefited both the event and local enterprises. By actively engaging with residents of varying demographics, addressing the unique needs of the entire community. Okay, the next awards honor is a significant effort to promote health and wellness, safety, exercise, and recreation, all of which lead to a better quality of life. Como is a finalist for their All Cancers Walk that brings awareness and health information to Como residents. Over 100 volunteer hours go into this event, including TCU medical students who provide health education to our residents. Next is Garden of Eden. It's recognized for their 19th annual 5K fun run and one mile walk. The push through theme is focused on overcoming personal and health issues. And the winner is Garden of Eden. Councilman Martinez, you want to join me on stage? The Garden of Eden's Wellness Project began 19 years ago as a priority to raise funds for the Neighborhood Association's operating expenses and future projects. The need for the project was important for maintaining the cohesiveness of the close-knit community. The 2023 push-through theme was promoted in person and on Facebook Live. Collectively, the community focused on pushing through personal issues, COVID-19, prostate cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease. The project benefited the entire neighborhood by involving all residents, businesses, and churches. It also shed light on the importance of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. The association's initial fundraising goal of $5,000 was doubled thanks to sponsorship from local businesses and generous donors. Okay, now we're gonna present our individual awards. I want to remind you these folks are not nominated by city council or staff, but by you, members of our community that they serve. We began the award named for the former city council member, Mr. Danny Scarth. Sadly, we lost council member Scarth several years ago, but his legacy of public service, inclusion, and kindness absolutely continues. The Danny Scarth Trailblazer Award recognizes someone who, in their everyday life, raises awareness and makes real changes that improve opportunities for persons with disabilities. And the finalists are, first, Ann Hill was nominated for her work to educate families and the public about Down syndrome through the Hades Brigade, named after her son, speaking engagements at school as well as for the Down Syndrome Partnership of North Texas and fundraisers such as the highly popular Bubbles, Boots, and Bingo event. Round of applause for Ann. Next up, we have Amy Carter. <clears throat> Not again. <clears throat> Amy Carter was nominated for her work with Meals on Wheels, where she has served thousands of meals to homebound elderly and disabled residents during the last 22 years. Round of applause to Amy. And finally, Joyce Parlin was nominated for her work with the Hearing Loss Association of America and their work to educate the public about hearing loss and tools that assist those with hearing loss. When COVID hit, she worked to keep members engaged and updated and continues her work with the organization as its president. Ah. And the winner is this year's recipient of the Danny Scarth Trailblazer Award is Miss Ann Hill. Ann has been described by friends as naturally vivacious and hardworking, someone who has dedicated time to developing a network of special friends in the Fort Worth community since the birth of Hayes. 
Hayes, born in 2021, is the second son of Anne and her husband, Blake. Born with an added chromosome, also, also referred to as Down syndrome, Hayes has been a bright light who has brought so many people together. Anne has worked tirelessly to connect parents of young children with Down syndrome by forming a loving and supported community of acceptance, love, positivity, and public education. Like most friend groups, this community of friends meet regularly to foster connections and develop deeper bonds. Anne's love and joy are vividly displayed across her various social media platforms. It is a clear depiction of how Anne's efforts are making a huge difference in the lives of so many, not only the lives of children, but parents as well. Next up, our city's Fort Worth Code Compliance Officer Award. And we know that our code compliance officers investigate, document, and ensure compliance with city codes, ordinances, and zoning regulations. And it's not always the kind of work that endears them to our neighbors. The Code Compliance Officer of the Year recognizes an officer who handles the job courteously with efficiency and maintain a positive customer service relationship with all of our neighbors. Our finalists for the Code Officer of the Year are Adrian Pertilla and Scott Castillo. Adrian was nominated by the Garden of Eden Neighborhood Association, and Scott was nominated by the Park Glen Neighborhood Association. And the winner is Mr. Scott Castillo. All right. My old boss. Oh, it's your old boss? I yeah, love it. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> oh, you don't need that. No. Unless you want to give a speech. No, no. no, sure. no, no, no. No, representing no. Code Compliance is Oscar Reyes. Oh, thank you so much. This is what the neighborhood had to say about Scott. Scott always answers his calls and emails and responds with such professionalism and enthusiasm. It is such a pleasure to work with Scott on issues that are not, only, not usually fun to deal with concerning code compliance. Officer Castillo volunteered to lead a neighborhood cleanup, demonstrating his dedication to the community. He is a regular attendee at our HOA annual meeting and other board meetings when needed, and he consistently follows up on cases to ensure that all issues are resolved appropriately. Congratulations, Scott. Next up is our Neighborhood Patrol Officer of the Year. Neighborhood patrol officers, otherwise known as NPOs, do all the things regular police officers do, but they also identify crime trends in neighborhoods they, were, they are assigned to, communicate with residents and business owners, attend community meetings and events, and recruit volunteers for citizens on patrol. They're often your most important link to the Fort Worth Police Department. Will the finalists please stand? First is Tracy Darty with Historic Stop Sick Neighborhood, neighborhood Association. Next up is Elise Espinoza, Fair Haven Neighborhood Association. Next is Bell Hadid, Regional, Ridgely North Neighborhood Association. Ridgely North. Bell really wishes the mayor didn't live in Ridgely North, don't you, Bell? It's okay. <laughs> Mike Marquez, Historic Southside Neighborhood Association. Derek Simpson, Park Glen Neighborhood Association. <laughs> Stephen Velasquez, the Landing Home Owners Association. Woo! <laughs> and Isaiah Garner, Garden of Eden Neighborhood Association. Thank you all for your service. We appreciate our MPOs and everything that you do for the City of Fort Worth and the Fort Worth Police Department. And the winner is Ms. Elise Espinoza. And if a representative from Fairhaven wants to join us on stage for the award presentation, we can do that. And Councilman Martinez, come on up as well. Um, Officer Elise Espinoza, the 2023 MPO of the Year, has been described as a passionate, dedicated, selfless, and inspiring officer. 
going above and beyond assigned duties and designated work hours. As the MPO of an area dealing with various issues, specifically street racing and drug-related activities, Officer Espinoza successfully contributed to the closure of a neighborhood drug house and also assisted greatly with efforts to decrease continued street racing in the Fairhaven District. In addition, her outstanding commitment to residents in the area contributed to the development of a task force created to combat high murder rates in the community. The rate reduction was contributed largely in part to Officer Espinoza's dedication to the residents of the Fairhaven District. As a neighborhood police officer, communication is vital to the success of relationships, also making herself available as often as needed. Officer Espinoza's community approach to policing is awe-inspiring. The community of Fairhaven trusts, loves, and admires her continued efforts. Next, we have the Fort Worth Neighbor of the Year. Our final individual award, which is this award, recognizes an individual whose outstanding service has made a positive impact on the people of their neighborhood. The best candidate for this award is not necessarily an association officer or leader, but more of an unsung hero to the community that they live in. Will the nominees please stand? Our nominees for the Fort Worth Neighbor of the Year are Ann Ahern, Hewlin Heights, Ms. Carol Brown, Lake Como. <laughs> Naomi Dillard, Carter Riverside. <laughs> and Rick Garcia Pascal. <laughs> and the winner is Carol Kirby Brown. <laughs> In 2015, Carol Kirby Brown retired from the city of Fort Worth as the Como Community Center Coordinator, where she served for over 30 years. Following her retirement, she started a nonprofit 501c3 organization called Como Lions Heart, an organization with the mission of strengthening families, youth, and seniors through community-based programming. The organization also seeks to identify financial resources to support activities of the Como Community Center and ensuring all residents of neighboring communities have access to safe spaces. Since the passing of the Fort Worth community activist, Ms. Viola Pitts in 2004, the Lake Como community dubbed Carol Kirby Brown as the new mayor of Lake Como, speaking volumes about the impact she has on the Lake Como community. As an active community member, Carol advocated effortlessly for the development of the new Como Community Center, which opened in 2020, along with promising various community events, ensuring camaraderie among friends and neighbors. She has always served as an advocate for the people. She was previously the Human Services Coordinator for the Cowboy Santas Program, a capacity she served in for 30 years. As a co-founder, she networked with various community organizations to bring awareness to the program. The Como community couldn't be prouder to have Carol Kirby Brown as a dedicated, hardworking, thoughtful, and gracious member, making her the true representation of what a neighbor of the year should be. And our final award today recognizes excellence in all of these categories. Judges make their selection from among all of this year's finalists. The winner of this year's Neighborhood of the Year will probably not come as a surprise after we've heard about all of their amazing projects this year. Would the residents of Lake Como please come forward to accept your award? The Lake Como Neighborhood Advisory Council is a product of the revised 1982 Citywide Citizen Participation Plan, a plan seeking to encourage citizen participation in decision-making process around the City of Fort Worth. Lake Como Neighborhood Advisory Council 
Act's purpose is to promote civic spirit and encourage members, partners, and institutions to work together for the common good, establish goodwill among residents, promote the improvement of public facilities and services, and engage with government and community institutions in dealing with community issues that could be alleviated with the use of public funds and other resources. Serving regular business and associate members within the Lake Como boundaries, the Lake Como Neighborhood Advisory Council has developed permanent and special committees such as Crime Task Force, a designated communications team, a neighborhood enhancement team, the Lake Como Wellness Council, and an executive committee to aid in the growth of the neighborhood. The Neighborhood of the Year recognition is bestowed upon an association that excels in all the previously mentioned categories meaning any of the nominees mentioned during today's ceremony could have been awarded this honor. The Community Engagement Office will, and the City of Fort Worth will send a representative from the winning neighborhood to the Neighborhoods USA National Competition in Lubbock, Texas in May. We'd like to c congratulate all of our winners today and thank you to the mayor and council members for joining us in today's celebration. At the beginning of the luncheon, we asked you to find out who had been in Fort Worth the longest. This person is invited to take home the lovely centerpiece that was donated by our local florist. We also have certificates for all of the finalists, so please pick those up afterwards. Thank you all so much for coming today. Round of applause for the city staff to put today on. Everybody have a great and safe, beautiful day today. Enjoy the Texas spring weather. God bless.